Hi kids, Miss Booksy here. Thanks so much for coming by the Cool School Library to see me. Today I want to read some of my favorite classic nursery rhymes. Let's see, which rhyme should we read first? How about Peter Peter Pumpkin Eater? Peter Peter Pumpkin Eater had a wife but couldn't keep her. He put her in a pumpkin shell and there he kept her very well. Well, I don't think I'd like to live in a pumpkin shell. <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> now let's see another version of Peter Peter Pumpkin Eater from Cool School's Nursery Rhyme Time. All right, kids, it's time for another nursery rhyme. This time it's about a guy named Peter. And I'm going to be honest, he's a bit odd. Whereas most of us are taking pumpkins and carving jack-o'-lanterns or making beautiful flower arrangements, this guy eats them. Excuse me. Now I've heard of pumpkin soup and I've heard of pumpkin pie, but this guy just takes a fork and a knife and eats the entire pumpkin. Weird. His wife thinks it's weird too. So he has a hard time keeping her around because she's always saying, Hi, why do you like pumpkin so much? And he always says, oh, I don't know, I just like my pumpkins. It's my favorite food. Why you gotta be on me about it all the time? You're gonna have a hard time keeping me around. So here's what he did. He ate the entire inside of a pumpkin and made her a house out of it. So therefore, he gets to eat pumpkin, she gets a sweet place to live, everyone's happy. Here we are, the rhyming part. Peter, Peter, pumpkin eater, had a wife and couldn't keep her. He put her in a pumpkin shell and there he kept her very well. That's not the only nursery rhyme about a guy named Peter. Here's one about Peter Piper. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. A peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked. If Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, where's the peck of pickled peppers that Peter Piper picked? <laughs> now let's see that Peter Piper cartoon from Cool School's Nursery Rhyme Time. Here it is, Nursery Rhyme Time. This here is Peter. Hey! His last name, Piper. We know this because he plays the pipe. Well, it's more like a tin penny whistle, but that's beside the point. When he's not playing instruments, he likes to work in his mother's garden. But here's something else. He loves peppers. Little peppers, big peppers, sweet peppers, pepperoni pizza, and even very spicy peppers. But his all-time knock-it-out-of-the-park favorite is... You guessed it, pickled peppers. I know, not the most delicious thing, but hey, who am I to say anything about what people like? I like pickled eggs. So, to sum it all up in a tricky, trippy tongue twister, Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. But, if Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, then how many pickled peppers did Peter Piper pick? Oh dear, we may never know. But if I had to guess, I'd say eight. Ah, hot, hot, ah, too spicy, I need water. Ooh, How about I give you a glass of water if you can say the tongue twister. Peter Pepper picked a bigger glass. Ah! Okay, fine. Ugh. Ah, boy, that was one spicy pepper. All right, next classic nursery rhyme, Little Boy Blue. Little boy blue, come blow your horn. The sheep's in the meadow, yeah. the cow's in the corn. No. Where is that boy who looks after the sheep? Under the haystack, fast asleep. Will you wake him? Oh no, not I. For if I do, he will surely cry. <laughs> oh, let's not wake little boy blue. Shh. Now let's watch Cool School's own version of little boy blue. Hello kids, I'm your narrator and I'm here with a nursery rhyme time emergency. We're looking for the little boy who looks after the sheep. Has anyone seen him? Have you? I haven't. Supposed to show up today, supposed to watch the sheep and the cow. They're all over the place. You, boy, 
in the blue. Come here, we need your horn. Yes, bring your trumpet. It's a French horn. Oh, French horn, that's great. That's perfect for calling sheep and cows. Come here, we need you to blow your horn because the sheep who are supposed to be in their pen are out in the meadow and the cow has gotten right into the corn. They're gonna eat everything. There's a reason we keep them pinned up. It's because they can't control the eating habits. And while you're doing that, blowing the trumpet, oh, French horn, sorry. While you're doing that, we're going to look for the little boy who's supposed to look after the sheep. Wait a second. Is that haystack moving? Ah, oh, I knew it. He's under the haystack and he's sleeping. How irresponsible. All right, well, in order to get it all packaged up nice, let's rhyme about it. Little boy blue. Come blow your horn. The sheep's in the meadow and the cow's in the corn. Where's the boy who looks after the sheep? He's under the haystack, fast asleep. And he's in for a rude awakening because he had a responsibility. Oh. Silly boy, always sleeping. Ready for another classic? Little Miss Muffet, <laughs> let's go. Little Miss Muffet sat on a tuffet, eating curds and whey. Along came a spider who sat down beside her and frightened Miss Muffet away. Now let's watch the nursery rhyme time version. Nursery rhyme, go. All right, here we are. We've got Miss Muffet. She's pretty little, small woman, very petite figure, right? Sitting on a tuffet. Not quite sure what that is. I imagine it's a bit of a large mushroom. And uh, what's she eating, right? What do normal kids eat, right? Small women. Of course, curds and whey. So she's eating her curds and whey, right? And uh-oh, there's that pesky spider, right? Comes down on his web. And what did it do? What did that spider do? He sat down right beside her. Like, as if, it's like, oh, don't mind me. I'm not scary. I'm not, I'm not frightening man-eating spider. I'm a nice, polite, share your food kind of spider. Um, by the way, do you mind sharing your curds and whey? And she goes, no, I don't think so. Runs off, scared away. Oh, <laughs> poor spider. But, oh, is it poor spider? No, because he ends up with the curds and whey. She forgot them. All right, to sum things up, little Miss Muffet sat on her toffet eating her curds and whey but along came a spider sat down beside her and frightened miss muffet away and he ends up with the curds and whey it's not part of the rhyme it's just separate added little bo peep is a great nursery rhyme let's read that one next Little Bo Peep has lost her sheep and doesn't know where to find them. Leave them alone and they'll come home, wagging their tails behind them. <laughs> In this next cartoon, we get to see where Little Bo Peep's sheep go when they're lost. Let's check this out. Now for another nursery rhyme time update. Little Bo Peep, she's lost her sheep and she doesn't know where they are. Maybe they're on a hill eating some grass. Maybe they're down in a valley, rolling down a hill. Maybe they're up on the top of a bridge. <coughs> Maybe they're climbing a mountain. Maybe they went to the North Pole, looking for Santa Claus. Maybe they're at the bottom of the ocean with Ron and Octavio. Maybe they're in science class with Professor Science. Maybe they're in the library, listening to stories with Miss Booksy. We just don't know the facts. But here's an idea. Leave them alone. Just leave them. Maybe they went on an adventure. Who knows? Let them go. Let them have a good time. They're adults. They know what they're doing. And they'll probably come back wagging their tails. Sum all of that craziness up into a rhyme. Little Bo Peep has lost her sheep and doesn't know where to find them. But leave them alone and they'll come home, wagging their tails behind them. Because sheep 
like to go on vacation. They're adults. They can do what they want. For our next nursery rhyme classic, let's check out Jack Be Nimble. Jack be nimble, Jack be quick. Jack jump over the candlestick. <laughs> that rhyme's so short. Let's see a longer version from Cool School's Nursery Rhyme Time. All right, here we are. Nursery Rhyme Time. Okay, children. This guy Jack, right? I know him. Great guy. Kind of nimble. Really quick. He's this sort of like bouncing on your toes kind of guy. He decides, oh, here I am. I'm Jack, I'm so nimble, I'm so quick, I'm gonna jump right over that candlestick. And he did. It was pretty fantastic. But if he would have just jumped a little higher, he wouldn't have caught his pants on fire. Ow, 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 hot, hot, hot. Oh man, he's took us up for a burn. That was a bad idea. To sum it all up then, Jack be nimble, Jack be quick, right? Jack jump over the candlestick, but if he would have jumped a little bit higher, he wouldn't have caught his pants on fire. Oh, look at it burn. He's gonna get down to his trousers. It's time for a nursery rhyme update. You all remember Jack. He was nimble and quick and jumped clear over the candlestick. Close to being an Olympic candle jumper, just needs a little more practice because he what? That's right, he caught his pants on fire. Silly Jack. Well, Jack got sad after that because those were his favorite jumping pants. He stopped training because his spirit was low. He lost hope. And since he stopped exercising, <laughs> And he started eating pizza every day, he got heavy. All he felt like doing was eating. One day he ran into Peter Peter, the pumpkin eater, who loved eating as well, specifically pumpkins. You love eating, but you're not doing it right, he said. Let me show you how it's done. I'm going to train you for a hamburger eating contest. When you exercise good and hard, you'll be extra hungry. And you'll be burning fat. So, you can eat a whole bunch and still be in good enough shape to jump over candlesticks. So, Jack and Peter Peter trained and trained and trained. They ran 10 miles on Mondays, biked 30 miles on Wednesdays, and did push-ups, pull-ups, and sit-ups with Mr. Itsy Bitsy Spider on Fridays for weeks and weeks on end until they were so hungry that they won the hamburger eating contest by eating 106 hamburgers in 25 minutes. And when he was finished, he had so much energy left that Jack jumped over three candlesticks and only ended up with one tiny burn mark on his bum. Let's check in with little Jack Horner. Little Jack Horner sat in a corner eating a Christmas pie. He put in his thumb and pulled out a plum and said, what a good boy am I? I don't know, he sounds a little mischievous. <laughs> Let's see how little Jack Horner behaves in this nursery rhyme time cartoon. Hey, kids, come here. It's time for a nursery rhyme. This one is about a kid, very small, named Jack Horner, and he likes pies. What kid doesn't like pies? I didn't, except for ice cream pie, but this one's about mincemeat pie. And so this boy, he's sitting over in the corner of a restaurant, orders a pie, waiter brings it, says, here you go, here's your pie. Thanks, thanks for the pie. So he's eating his pie, right? And he gets this idea. I'm gonna take my thumb, I'm gonna stick it right in the middle of the pie. And when he pulls it out, it's got a big old plum on it. And he says, boy, I'm a good boy. And he eats the plum. I don't get it, but here it is in a rhyme. Little Jack Horner sat in the corner eating a mincemeat pie, which aren't delicious. He stuck in his thumb and pulled out a plum and said, what a good boy am I? And he finished his pie and he wiped his face with a napkin because he's a polite kid, as all of you should be. 
Next, we have a classic nursery rhyme about bath time. <laughs> Rub-a-dub-dub. -dub. Let's go. Rub-a-dub-dub, -dub, three men in a tub. And who do you think they be? The butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker. All set out to see. Ready for the Rub-a-dub-dub -dub cartoon? Let's check it out. Hello, kids. It's bath time on nursery rhyme time. Don't worry, no one's getting wet. This one is actually a bathtub boat. That's right, and who's in it? Well, you need to eat when you're out at sea. So we've got a butcher, right? He'll be able to provide all the meat and food that we need. But meat's great, what do you put it on? How are we gonna make sandwiches without a baker? Right? Oh, hey, look, a baker. He just happened to be in the tub as well. How are we gonna see when it gets to be nighttime? I know, candlestick maker. There we are, we've got a butcher, we've got a candlestick maker, and we've got a baker. So we've got our food, and we've got our light, and we're surrounded by water because they're all going out into the ocean. Sum it all up in a rhyming manner. Rub-a-dub-dub, three men in a tub. And who do you think they'd be? The butcher? the baker, and the candlestick maker, all set out to sea. A little lesson on absolutely everything you would ever need to go out into the ocean and float in a bathtub. The end. Ever notice there's lots of nursery rhymes about boys named Jack? Here's one now with Jack and Jill. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack ah. fell down and broke his crown, and Jill ah. came tumbling after. Let's see what else happens with Jack and Jill in this Nursery Rhyme Time episode. It's about time for the Nursery Rhyme. Isn't that sublime? Guy named Jack, right? Not the beanstalk type, not the nimble one, just regular old Jack, and he's with his fiance, Jill. Jack's thirsty, he grabs a pail, and he goes, I'm going to the well. So he spots it up at the top of the hill. Doesn't make sense for it to be on a hill because he'd have to dig it much deeper. But anyway, he and his fiance run up the hill to fetch themselves a bucket of water. But Jack, he's running too fast and he falls and he breaks his crown. Forgot to mention, Jack's a prince. And you know what? Jill, running just as fast, tumbles after. Sum it all up, bring it in. Jack and Jill ran up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down and broke his crown. And Jill came tumbling after. And they rolled all the way down the hill and ended up in the gully. And they found another well and they drank from that one. Now let's read a classic nursery rhyme about a rainy day. It's called Rain, Rain, Go Away. Rain, rain, go away. Come again another day. Little Arthur wants to play. And here's a fun cartoon version from Cool School's Nursery Rhyme Time. It's nursery rhyme time. And, oh no, look at that. It's raining, oh, bummer, oh. We've got a poem for that, haven't we? We've got a poem for everything, don't we? Here it goes. Rain, rain, because we're speaking to the rain. Might not have ears to listen, but we're gonna speak anyway. Let it know where to go. Tell it to go away. But not forever. It can come again another day. Just not today, because well, maybe we have baseball practice. Or maybe an outdoor ballet recital. Or maybe it's Little Boy Blue's birthday. Oh no! The old woman's moved from a shoe into a pair of galoshes. <laughs> Ooh, looks like Humpty's wall's a bit too slippery. Itsy Bitsy wants another go at that water spout. Maybe Jack B. Nimble's candle's gone out. Or maybe, just maybe, little Arthur here just wants to go out and play. That's right. And so we say, rain, rain, go away. Come again another day. Little Arthur wants to play. Rain, rain, go away. And maybe it will. Just maybe, if we're lucky. 
There's another nursery rhyme about rain. It's raining, it's pouring. It's raining, it's pouring, the old man is snoring. He went to bed and bumped his head, and he wouldn't get up in the morning. Oh no, let's see if there's a happier ending in the cartoon. Hello kids, hi, welcome, nursery rhymes. So at this place, right? Old man's house, and it's raining. It's absolutely pouring rain. And this old man, right? He's snoring, snoring away. <laughs> Earlier that night, went to the kitchen, had a snack first. Thought, I'm gonna have something great. Bumped his head and didn't wake up in the morning. Sum it all up, put it all together. It's raining, it's pouring. The old man, he's snoring. He went to bed, but bumped his head and couldn't wake up in the morning. But you know what? There's a reason he didn't wake up in the morning. It's because it was Saturday and he wanted to sleep in. So he woke up in the afternoon. Another one of my favorite nursery rhymes is the old woman in the shoe. Let's read that one. There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. She gave them some broth without any bread, then kissed them all kindly and sent them to bed. Now let's watch the Nursery Rhyme Time cartoon. All right, children, here's a good one for people with big feet. So there's this woman, right? Older woman, not that old, less gray hair. There we are. So this woman lives inside of a giant six bedroom shoe. That's right, she lives inside of a smelly, well not reeking, less smelly, a slightly funky smelling shoe. And she had so many kids that she didn't know what to do with them. They were always climbing the shoe, making a ruckus, throwing mud, trouble, trouble kids. For dinner, because they were bad, she gave them soup without anything in it. No noodle, no chicken, not even a mushroom, and no side dishes, not even bread or broccoli salad. But you know what? She loved them. So she gave them all big kisses and sent them off to bed. Sum it all up. In a rhyming format, here we go! There was an old woman who lived in a shoe, had so many children that she didn't know what to do. She gave them all broth without any bread and kissed them all kindly and sent them to bed. But they all read comic books under the covers and ate sweets that they bought with their allowance. Naughty kids. Well, that was fun. <laughs> hey, what about me? Rumpelstiltskin. My story has a rhyme in it, too. Let's watch that now. Today's story is Rumpelstiltskin. Are you ready? <laughs> Let's go. Long, long ago, there was a dad, and he had a kid. A daughter, actually. <gasps> That's me. <laughs> Together, we made fine designer clothing. The clothes we made were so fancy that the king wanted to wear them. The clothes you make are fantastic. Ah, oh, gee, thank you, king. Thanks a whole kit and caboodle. But my daughter's the real artist. She's so delicate when she's spinning. I bet she could spin straw into gold. Well, as you might know, kings like gold. They like gold a lot. Gold, you say? Hmm. I'd like to meet this daughter of yours. Send her to my castle for brunch this Sunday. We'll have melba toast and salmon locks. So that Sunday, I went to the king's castle for brunch. But instead of melba toast and salmon locks, oh, I got horse hay and dungeon locks. Oh dear, the king locked me away in the dungeon. You can come out once you spin all this straw into gold. I didn't actually know how to spin straw into gold. That was just a figure of speech. Somebody please help me! 
Why, hello there. A little elf man appeared. I see you need to sew some straw into gold. That happens to be my specialty. Mm, that's pretty random. <laughs> but okay, I don't have much, but I'll give you anything. Hmm, how about that necklace of yours? It's very pretty. And even though this necklace was a gift for my BFF Snow White, I made the deal. I couldn't be stuck in this stinky dungeon forever. The elf man worked his magic. Spinning, he sang so while he worked, which was kind of annoying, but he was helping me out. <laughs> when the king came back in the morning, the hay was gone. And in its place, pure gold. The king was utterly flabbergasted. I'm utterly flabbergasted. Well, I'm pretty good at this, uh, obviously. <laughs> good. I want more! So this time I'm going to give you 100 times the hay. If you can spin it all to gold by morning, I will let you out. But if not, you will be sent out into the ocean on a leaky ship, never to return! Oh, and the ship will be full of singing mice who are terrible singers. <laughs> now get back to sewing. Mean? So night came and I didn't know what else to do, so I, I called out. Ah, uh, hey, magic little dude. Um, I forgot your name, but I, uh, I need you. So, you need more help, do you? I do. I do. I do. It's gonna cost you. Anything. I'll give you anything you want. Pinky promise. Again, he sang as he worked. Spinning, sewing, gold glowing, taking hay and making it pay. It took all night, and I got seriously tired of that song. But my little friend sewed every last bit of straw into gold. Thank you, thank you, thank you. How much do I owe you? On the night of your first son's first birthday, I will return to take him as my own. He <laughs> laughed all crazy like and oh, disappeared. Wait, what? He didn't say he was going to take my son on his first birthday, did he? Nah, that would be crazy. The next day, the king saw all that gold, and he was so excited, he let me go. So fast forward a bit. I'm in charge of my own designer clothing company. I'm married, I have a super cool house, a dog and a cat. I had forgotten all about the little elf who had spun straw into gold. I was living happily ever after. Until the night of my first son's first birthday. We were all celebrating, having a great time, when the little old elf crashed the party. Here I am. Give me that baby. Okay, funny story. I thought you were kidding. <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> Not really. You made a pinky promise. Okay, okay, I'll, I'll give you gold. Tons of gold. I don't need gold. I can turn star into gold myself, remember? But I'll make a deal with you, lady. If you can guess my name, then you keep your son. But if you don't, I'll take him and your first daughter. Do we have a deal? I began to guess. Paul, no, Mike, no, Mark, no, Sean. Uh -uh. Sean spelled S-E-A-N. Nope. Sean spelled S-H-A-U-N. Not even close. Mm, Tim, nope. Tom, nope. Tyler, nope. Taylor, uh -uh. Kanye, Dragon. Senior, nope. Junior. Nope. Oh, nope. I guess hundreds of names, hundreds upon hundreds of names, but I just couldn't come up with it. To make matters worse, the horrible little elf was leaning over the baby's crib, singing a lullaby. That's my job. I'll have a son, I'm gonna win. She'll never guess my name, cause it's Rumpelstiltskin. Just then, the baby giggled and spoke his very first word. He said, Rumpelstiltskin. Everyone was so excited, as they always are when babies say their first words. What did he say? Nothing. Um, I think he wants his bottle. Rumpelstiltskin, Rumpelstiltskin. Your name is Rumpelstiltskin. No, no, no. <laughs> but seriously, we called the police a long time ago anyway. You think you're just gonna come in here and take my baby? I'm his mom. <laughs> you're a bad elf and you're going to jail. And so we were free from Rumpelstiltskin forever. So my family went on a vacation cruise to celebrate and the mice on this ship were excellent singers. <laughs>
The brunch buffet was pretty good too. Smoked salmon with poi-fection, mwah! The end. I hope you enjoyed reading and watching all the different nursery rhymes with me. Be sure to subscribe so you never miss a video from Cool School. And click right over here to watch a story time video with me, Miss Booksy. <laughs> Bye. Bye, kids. Bye. Bye. <laughs>